All right, man, this is episode number 58 of the Cozy Corner of Cinema. This is being recorded on Saturday, May 6, 2023 at 12.40 p.m. And I wish you guys could see what I was looking at right now. I'm looking outside, man. There's beautiful greenery outside. The sun is shining down on the grass. There's a wind, a nice chill wind in the air that's not too warm, not too cool. It's just about right. The branches are flowing around. And most importantly of all, the cat is enjoying his comfort right here. I had to open up the window for him because he likes to feel the breeze come in while he, uh, you know, rests. And, uh, you know, here's the sounds of the birds, the wind going through the branches, the whistling in the air. It's something else, man. You know, I got to run out later. And let me tell you, this is prime time for driving with your window down, whether you want to listen to your favorite songs, you listen to a podcast, or whatever it is, or maybe you don't want to listen to anything. You just want to actually take in the nature of it all, man. It's fantastic. You know, it's what I was talking about before, you know, the... Um, you know, when, when, when you would, you know, when you drive up somewhere and you hear somebody else's car, man, they're playing music that they like, you're hearing all, all kinds of music that maybe you weren't familiar with before, you know, rock or, or country or rap or, um, you know, pop music or whatever. What I was talking about before, like with American Graffiti and films like that, sort of like the soundtrack of the day, soundtrack of the night is uh, not just what music you wanted to hear, but, you know, it certainly helps. You put on the radio and you hear, you know, uh, whatever, man, it's, it's something spectacular, man, it's really something spectacular. Uh, you know, when you have days like this, you really want to take advantage of them. You know, whatever whatever it is you want to do, if you want to go outside and go for a nice walk, that's good for the mind, it's good for the body, gets the blood flowing, gets the heart pumping, you know, or maybe you want to stay in and get some work done, get your reading done, or maybe you got to watch some films or whatever it is you got to do, or maybe you want to catch up on an acquaintance, whatever it is you want to do, man. The most important thing of all is to take the day by the horns and, uh, you know, steer in the direction that you want to, not to do anything that you don't want to do, not to, uh, you know, find yourself in the middle of a milieu and just find yourself being like, oh man, I need to be doing something else right now. I feel like I'm dying right here, man. Just, we all get in those situations where you're just like, man, what am I even doing here? This is insanity, man. You know, it's like, you know, someone's like, hey, let's go out to lunch, man. Let's go out and get a bite to eat. And I'm like, no way, man. You kidding me? That's like a nightmare right there. Having like, you know, small talk about absolutely nothing, just wasting your life away, man. Yeah, that's just ain't for me, man. I, I I got better things to do with my time than that, man. Speaking of which, man, I tell you, this past week, writing has been going phenomenally, man. You know, some days I've gotten more done than the other, but I'm reading it back. I've been working on a bigger project that's been taking up months and months of my time, and, and you know, it's just slowly but surely coming along. You know, it's a lot of, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a lot of research going into it, a lot of uh, reading that has to be done uh, to get kind of the uh, the point of a lot of it, but it's real, real cool stuff, man. I'm just really happy with how it's coming along, and I wasn't even going to talk about this. I, I, uh, I, I was checking on Letterboxd for something. And I saw this list here I thought was interesting. It was weird in WT WTF movies. And I was interested at the uh, amount, and not just the amount of films, that that's not what I mean, but the different kinds of films, films that you would consider, like, uh, you know, they say so bad it's good, or, you know, it's, uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what else you'd really call it, man. Um but uh, it's, it's strange. I mean, you got a lot of films on here, like, uh, you know, ones you traditionally see, uh, like House or Houseu, which, you know, you see in a lot of lists, which is a really wild film, and, uh, you know, uh, Pink Flamingos, which is a very uh, taboo film. Uh, you have a lot of other titles here. You know, it's strange. Then there's a lot of the titles on here that I think are actually uh, really terrific films as well. Films like Angel's Egg, uh, which hopefully we'll get a, a release of one day. Idle Hands from the uh, 90... Uh, what year is it? 99. Naked Lunch, which I talked about recently. It's, uh, it's, it's real cool stuff, man, here. Yeah, you know, I mean, the the letterbox lists, man, I think they're primarily good for just discovering new films, not exactly, you know, I mean, it, anyone can make a list at any, anything you want to, man, but, you know, sometimes you just gotta look at these lists and, uh, you know, find yourself some, you see, uh, you see a cover and you're like, what the hell is that? Or you see a title. Because, you know, man, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm i not quite as nostalgic on the whole video store kind of trend, man. And, you know, I had, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I 
the, the video store was a big part of, you know, my, my, my upbringing, man, you know, go there and you find some cool films and stuff. But I feel like with a lot of it, man, it, you know, people's experiences are different than one another. Obviously, if people have more fondness for one point in their life or one event or anything like that, they're going to get something more out of it than if you described it to somebody else. You know, if I say, oh, man, this pizza place, it really, I have a lot of good memories there. Somebody else to come back with, that pizza place is terrible. You know, they had bad service. The food wasn't good. I hated it there, you know. But what I always see... I see a lot of the same um, things brought up when it comes to the video store, man, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, there is a lot of uh, solid points there, man. The, the communal aspect of it, of going there, and if you're going to a local place, man, you, uh, you know, have the back and forth with the man or the woman behind the counter, you know, more so than a, a chain kind of Hollywood video blockbuster movie gallery type of place, you know. The ma and pop stores are where, you you know, you'd find cool titles there, man. But overall, man, I'm not quite of the mentality of, uh, of, the, you know, I think right now we're, we're in a great point at discovering a lot of films and whatever you want to watch, man, it's pretty much there. And, you know, we, you go online, you look at the covers and all that stuff, man. And, yeah, it's cool to pick them up and all that, but I don't quite have the fondness or the um, – Kind of the nostalgia of a lot of that that I, I hear a lot of the the, glor- the over glorification. You know, I feel like there's a lot of just really bad points that are uh, or a lot of points I should say that are kind of glossed over. You know, you have a whole wall of one new release. You're trying to find some, you know, unless it's a Ma and Pa store that's specialized in certain kinds of films. You're trying to find some special kind of genre of film or foreign film or anything like that. You're, you're probably not going to find it. You know, you're not going to go to your local blockbuster to try to find a uh, you know a Pasolini film or something like that. It's just, it's just not going to happen, you know? Um, but the local video store, maybe on the old test, they had a lot of great memories there, you know, just, it was a local one, you know, eventually it shut down probably in about, um, 2012, 2013 or so. It was one of the last ones of the area. There was another one that was, uh, down the road about 10 minutes or so. And they even had still, they still had like VHSs and stuff. That one was all right. Their selection wasn't as good. I do, man, I wish I grabbed that Faces of Death VHS, though, you know, I, I don't really collect VHS or anything like that, but it would have been really cool to have, but someone grabbed it before me, and I hope they enjoy that as well. You guys hear about that? They're still trying to get that Faces of Death remake off the ground, man, and I heard their idea of it, and I was like, alright, that's not a bad idea, it's, it's not, it's not a, like, a literal remake, it's sort of like the idea of Faces of Death, but I feel like now, man, it's like, unless you have a really talented screenwriter behind it, you do something really unique and cool with it, you know, especially with, like, maybe the internet and all that i don't know how well it could really work man i you know it's definitely a time and a place sort of thing that kind of film um you know it's like trying to do a remake of like mondo kane or something like that or carne has it mondo kane or carne i never know how to say it um you know it's just not gonna happen also man hey hopefully hopefully we get that good by uncle tom 4k this year from blue underground they've been saying you know i, I know they announced it for 2023 so hopefully we get an announcement on that soon because they just announced something uh recently i thought maybe not I don't know. I should also say they're actually having a sale right now on Diabolic DVD of a lot of Blue Underground titles. I think most of their catalog right now that's on 4K and Blu-ray is available there. I'm going to see if I can pull it up here. Um, I don't know about the very recent stuff uh, because I'm looking, I'm looking here at the top and I think the most recent titles that they have here are uh, the 4Ks of Final Countdown, Quiet Days and Clichy, and God Told Me To. Oh, and Uncle Sam as well. So, yeah... Keep an eye on that, man. There's a lot of good titles here to uh, to get from, for you know, let's see, yeah, for 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 good prices and all that. Uh, I'm looking here, Shoot, man. I I, I might have to grab some of these titles. I uh, I tell you guys, I I, I recently watched Quiet Days and Clichy, and man, I dug it. I I, uh, I had a couple of acquaintances have real have some real negative things to say about it. And I I saw where they were coming from, man, but uh, I, I thought it was a cool film, man. They got a lot of their older Blu-rays on here as well that I imagine will probably get upgrades at some point. Can you guys imagine if they actually did a 4K of snuff? Wouldn't that be something, man? Actually, I wouldn't mind a new release of that if there were some good features on that. I was telling you guys before, like a long time ago, I say a long time ago, probably about a year ago, when I was reading that book, Killing for Culture, um, the, the the 2015 edition from Edison to Isis. I think it was 2015 because there's been a couple um, reprints of that with updated um, stuff in that. But there's a whole great section about the um, the premiere of Snuff, and that's, that's actually one of the 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 uh, uh, one of the funniest parts of the book. And they're talking about the premiere and, and who was there and. And it's, uh, well, I'll let you guys read that. If you guys uh, haven't read that yet, definitely keep that on your radar. You can uh, 
find it uh, pretty easily online, I would assume. I got it from Barnes & Noble's site, so I imagine you guys probably be all right with grabbing that as well. Uh, let's see here, man. So Vinegar Syndrome has their uh, has their partner label titles that they put out uh, pretty recently, as, long, as well as uh, what's interesting is that they have this new film, Sick of Myself, which is being distributed by Utopia, uh, which is one of their partner labels. I, I've been seeing the uh, trailers for it at the cinema, and it looks like an interesting film, um, but the thing with, uh, let's see here, uh, but the thing with it is that it's, it's strange how they're the ones who are releasing it. You know, I imagined that, like, uh, Utopia would have, would have put this out because one of their recent films that I did see theatrically, which I actually thought was real cool, man, uh, was the... What the hell's the name of that guy? The Civil Dead from... I think it came out this year or last year. I, I don't know, man. Uh, directed by this guy, Clay Tatum. Stars Clay Tatum, this other fellow, uh, uh, Whitmer Thomas... Uh, let's see here, I got the whole list here. Demores Brown, Bud Diaz, Christian Lee Houston. It's an interesting film, man. It's kind of what I was talking about a little while ago, where when I was talking about some of the Mumblecore films, and this really isn't that. I mean, you know, those films were very, uh, uh, very light on plot. And this is as well, and I think that there's closer to a plot, actually, a uh, closer to a narrative that I feel like kind of separates this film amongst those films as not being grouped in, you know, especially even when it comes to the conclusion of the film, it's one of these things where I can imagine that if, if you're not, for, I mean, for one, if this isn't going to be, if, if you watch a lot of those kinds of films and they're not for you, this isn't going to be for you, man. Now, what I'm saying is that while this has something closer to, to a narrative, the film is very loose with that. It's more interested in the interaction between these two main characters. I should probably have to say the plot. Let me get a sip of this drink here, and uh, we'll talk about the plot. Why not? We'll talk about the civil dead. Why not, man? It's a beautiful day out. We'll uh, we'll see what goes with the flow, man, so I can uh, get on out of here and get the work done that I need to get done. You hear that damn squeaking chair? Jesus Louise, man. Yeah, I got no notes for this, so... Just bear with me for a uh, for a bit. I might uh, start to trail off and ramble about this. But yeah, these uh, the, this guy, man, and he's living uh, somewhere in California. I have no idea. He's living with his girlfriend. He's kind of a kind of a loser. He's kind of bumming around. His girlfriend's like, "Hey, man, you should get more back. You should get back into your photography and stuff, man. Actually, you know, get out there, get a job, and all that." And he's like, "All right, yeah, you know, I will." So he's driving around. You know, he's doing his photography and and all that. He's feeling kind of uh, like aimless in his life. Uh, and then one day, he sees an old buddy of his, and his buddy's like, hey, you know, what the hell are you doing here? And he's like, oh, hey, you know, uh, it was good seeing you. you know, I'm going to go do my own thing or whatever. And his buddy's like, no, oh, we should we should hang out and stuff. And, you know, and the guy's like, all right, you know, that's, that's cool. I haven't really seen you in a while, but uh, all right, we'll hang out. So and after a night of, you know, having a good time, you wake up in the morning, he's like, man, you got to go. I I got things to do today, and it's, which is a great moment. But he's like, well, what do you got to do? And you can see that moment where he's like, I don't have a goddamn thing to do. But he has to think like, ah, you know, I got to go here and to go there and this stuff like that. Anyways, without giving away the whole film, realize, you know, right in the title, man, you find out this guy is dead. And it's like, you know, they prove it because even the main guy is like, his, his immediate reaction is like, uh, this is a crazy person I haven't seen in a while. What the hell is he talking about, man? But we find out that uh, he, you know, he is dead. And what's interesting about the film where... I, I, I like these kinds of films, man. When it comes to the narrative, the narrative is there. You know, this main guy, he's got to really figure out his life. He's got to stop being a loser. He's got to, you know, get himself together. But the film isn't totally interested in that. If I told you that plot synopsis and you're like, that sounds like a film I'd want to see. I'm going to go see that film because that sounds like a good plot. You know, you're going to be disappointed because the film is less concerned with that, with a narrative, an ABC narrative, and more so with these characters bumming around, man. Because I really like the interaction between these two main characters, man. These act, This actor... Um, Clay Tatum and uh, Whitmer Thomas. They have a good back and forth. We see the frustration. I believe it's the main guy. Let me actually Google this up because I want to make sure I get the names right. Um, let's see. Get the... Uh, pull that up here. Let's see here. Uh, I tell you, man, the internet doesn't want to work when uh, I get my things together. But anyways, man. All right. Yeah, this main guy, Clay Tatum, who... Uh, uh, direct the film, stars in the film, man. He's he's an interesting lead, man, because he's one of these guys who, you know, he he's a, he's a loser. You know, his character is a loser, but you still like him. He's not like, you know, it's kind of what I was talking about before, a little while ago, with a movie like The African Desperate, and, or The Africa Desperate, or what the hell's the name of that film? Is that what that was called? Oh my gosh, I'm losing my damn brain, man. Uh, 
Yeah, The African Desperate, where I talked about that film a little while ago, and that's the film I liked a lot. And that's the same kind of deal when you first introduce these characters, you're like, oh, these, these characters are going to be annoying, they're going to be hipsters, they're going to be like, and yeah, they kind of are, they are, are a little annoying, are a little hipstery, but they're also fun to be around, you know? And this guy, Clay Tatum, his character in the film is not exactly fun to be around. I mean, like I said before, he's kind of like just slogging through life, not really doing a whole lot with it. But he's an enjoyable and charismatic lead in a way that once you have this other actor, Whitmer Thomas, in the film... They bounce off each other really well. Whitmer Thomas, want, you know, he, he wants to help him and all that and saying like, hey, man, you're going to get life together. But at the same time, Whitmer Thomas is kind of like drifting through life, man. Ironically, with him being dead, he's just like, yeah, I guess I'm just going to hang out with you forever, man. You know, and Clay, uh, Clay, um, the hell's his name I said it up here? Uh, Clay Tatum is like, nah, man, you know, I, I, I may be a loser, man, but I got to have my own life. You know, I got to do this own thing. And it's the, it's the frustration that he has with that. I will say that it's, uh, my only real complaint with the film, I would say, is that it does run a little long. It's about an hour 43, and which doesn't sound long as a film, man. Like, you know, you watch some films that are long and, and there can only be 70 minutes. And you watch some films, you're like, Oh, that flew by, and it's like, oh my god, that was three hours. But I think more so when it comes to the third act of the film, which I think is really solid as well. It does start to, I, I was sitting there kind of waiting for the conclusion, man. I think, uh, you know, if this had trimmed some of the, uh, if this had been even about 90 minutes or so, I think it would have done the film a favor. But overall, this kind of film, you have these characters hanging out back and forth. I just found it very enjoyable, man. You know, I don't know if I'd pick up the Blu-ray or not. Um, I was a little disappointed, man. There's really almost a real lack of features on this. I'm looking here. It's just commentary with Clay Tatum and Whitmer Thomas and then deleted scenes and I'm like, man, I really would have liked something more. But what I was seeing before, man, that's cool that Utopia are distributing more films. I'm looking forward to seeing Sick of Myself. It looks like an interesting film. Uh, you know, it's not one I'm going to buy or anything like that unless it's like, you know, a phenomenal film or something like that. You know, when it comes to the newer releases that uh, Vinegar Syndrome and the partner labels put out, I almost never buy them, man, because I, I, I don't know. I'm just more interested in the older, older films, man. I'm more interested in discovering kind of films that went through the cracks more so than buying a brand new film. I really don't buy brand new films that often. I'm talking about brand new in terms of a new release film. I mean, I think the last new release that I bought was like probably After Sun. Um, but, oh, speaking of which, man, man, I read this yesterday. I don't know if this is true or not, but I was talking about on the last uh, Blu-ray episode that Ennis Man is getting a, a uh, Blu-ray from the BFI. Man, I read that that's not even getting a Blu-ray in the States. That's getting a DVD. I'm like, what the hell, man? A movie that looks as beautifully as that, you know, shot in gorgeous 16mm with phenomenal zooms, great locales, a great lead performance, and he ain't even going to put it on Blu-ray. <coughs> it's a damn shame, man. I got something in my throat. Jeez Louise, man. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a real shame, so I guess I'll be importing that one for sure. Uh, or maybe someone in the U.S. will actually put it out. Maybe there's a partner label that will put it out or whatever, you know. Irreversible just got announced that Blu-ray, but, you know, that Indicator Blu-ray's been out for a while, and that's a pretty amazing release. And, you know, I like Altered Innocence. I like what they do, but there's just no chance it's going to be better than the than the uh, Indicator release. Just no chance at all. Also, the features are cut in half, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. But, yeah, keep an eye out on a lot of those partner label titles, man. You know, they're, the months are hit or miss. Some months there's cool-looking titles. Other months it's just like, what the hell is this, man? And a lot of those titles that I end up wanting to watch, you know, if I'm really that interested, I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll add it to like a, a watch list or something like that. I'm, like I said, I'm more interested in the older kind of titles. You know, I, I'm nearly not going to blind buy a brand new film. I'd rather just, you know, and, and I'll watch it and if I'm like, ah, it's a, you know, it's a great film or something like that, I'll buy it. I mean, even The Civil Dead, if it's like on sale or something, maybe I'll pick it up, but I'm not going to pay, you know, $15, $17 for it uh, with the subscriber price. Because if you're a subscriber on Vinegar Syndrome, on their site, you get uh, discounted titles, but I, I can't even imagine paying full price, you know, $25 before shipping for that. It's just it's just insanity, man, you know. But, hey, to be strong, keep an eye on that film. I thought it was really interesting. I really like these uh, uh, almost, I don't want to say quasi mumble core because, one, that sounds kind of insulting, and, two, it's sort of just like, I don't know, more just a straight character drama, drama comedy. I talked about that film back in January, uh, something anything, which is kind of falls into that line, and that's a film that I just thought was uh, was fantastic. I, I uh, have, haven't heard anyone talk about it. I, you know, I, I talked about it at length in that episode, and I thought it was a, a really touching, really romantic, um, just uh, just a really great film, man. That I would love to get a Blu-ray of that at some point. I don't even think it has a physical release or not. Let's uh, let's take a look at that. Actually, maybe I can see here. Uh, let's see if that even has a Blu-ray or not. Probably not, though. I mean, I would imagine that. Probably not. 
All right, no Blu-ray. Is there a DVD? All right, there's a DVD. From what the hell is this? DVD Planet Store dot PK. That's, I don't think this isn't even an official release, man. It's uh, yeah, I don't know what this site is, man. Dot PK. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, it looks like uh, nah, not gonna be anything here. Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, looking up here. All right, man. Anyways, I'm going off topic. Look at that. I'm losing my damn mind. Going off topic, talking about all these other crazy films, man. I start on one thing, I go from another thing. And the main film that I actually want to talk about for this episode, which is a film that I loved, uh, was one that I watched on Amazon Prime. This was back in 2020, and and when uh, and the film is beyond the infinite two minutes. I don't know exactly where this is from, but when One Cut of the Dead came out, that got a lot of talk, and rightfully so. One Cut of the Dead is a terrific film. It's a great testament to... Uh, to great filmmaking, to the fun and frustrations that come with filmmaking. It's, a, it's such a great film. And this one, when this came out, this got a lot of talk in the same conversation with One Cut of the Dead. In terms of both these films are one, are for the most part one take. You know, if you've seen One Cut of the Dead, you know what I'm talking about. With this film, it's, it's, you have the opening of the film, and then the rest of the film is one take. And the, what I love about this film, man, so you have this guy, this man, and I'm, I don't even know who, I don't know who's who in the film. There's no IMDb name, uh, uh, pictures here. I'm not gonna guess. I'm just gonna say this guy, this fella, this girl, this chick. Bear with me, man. Just, I'm here to recommend the film. Uh, also, this has a blur from Third Window Films, I gotta say right now. So if you're on uh, Arrow's site, I think it's actually part of that. They, I think they own Third Window or something like that. Or maybe they just distribute some of their films, I don't know. But this film, man, you got this main fella. And he's uh, he lives above this uh, kind of, what is it? It's like a, like a cafe or a food place or something like that. I don't know, man. He's upstairs and he gets it and he's on, uh, he's, he's, Sitting in this bedroom, and he has his TV on, and then all of a sudden, he's on the TV, and he's like, hey, I'm you from two minutes in the future, man, and this guy is like, what the hell is going on? This is insanity. What, am I, what is even happening here? And this fella is like, uh, all right, now I need you to do me a favor, because I'm you two minutes in the future. I need you to go downstairs, and I need you to get in front of the TV and tell you from the past, two minutes ago, what I'm going to tell you right now. And he's like, all right, man, this is insanity, but I'm going to go with it. He goes downstairs and he realizes he's talking to himself two minutes in the past. And then from there, we get this loop, man. We get other characters that come into it. They realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, this is two minutes in the past. What what the hell is going on here? This thing's a paradox. And it's like, man, you got to stick with it. Because what I like about the film is something that, you know, I, I you have that as is, man, you have the whole idea of this TV or whatever it is that, that can, you can see two minutes in the, in the future, two minutes in the past, I'm sorry, in the past, sorry, the future completely in the film, but uh, what the film does so great is on top of having a bunch of really likable characters, the script of the film is so strong on top of the actual physical filmmaking. These characters are going back and forth, they're running up and down the stairs, and we, and it all comes together greatly, man, where you, uh, you find yourself with all these questions, you're like, wait a minute, man, this thing's a paradox, what if they just don't do what the, what the, uh, what they're supposed to do in two minutes, just mess everything up, should they try it, and it goes through all those motions, man, and answers them all in a way where it's just like, man, you just gotta enjoy the ride for what it is, man, it's like what I'm talking about with, like, Christopher Nolan's Tenet, you have that great part in the film where you have Robert Pattinson's character talking about the grandfather, uh, uh, the grandfather paradox, Aaron, I'm, I'm sorry, you have, uh, John David, what the hell's his name, uh, the Washington, uh, is it John David Washington? I don't know his name. Uh, the main guy in that film, he, he's the one talking about the grandfather paradox. Robert Pattinson's like, hey man, that doesn't really matter. All that matters is that we're in this situation right now and we gotta take care of this, man. You can worry about that later. And that's what this film does. They're like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. We're gonna go with it. And what I love what the script does is continues to manipulate, manipulate time, man. They do some really clever gags in terms of getting further ahead into the future. Like, wait a minute. If we do this, maybe we can go more than two minutes. And then other characters start coming into the film. They see themselves later on in the film and they're like, wait, what the hell? How are we from? How are we? How did we get there? How did we get this item? How did we get that? 
and it all comes together great. If, if the script was on its own, that'd be fine. You'd have a really exceptional film as is. But then you have the filmmaking that's constantly moving around. You find yourself trying to catch up with the film because you just you know that the script writing is so confident. Uh, written by this fellow Mikado uh, Ueda, and I should also say the director is uh, Junta Yamaguchi. And I looked them up, and I'm not familiar with their other work. They, they have some other credits to their names, but I'm not, uh, I wasn't familiar with that. And, and the actors in this film as well. It's, uh, I'm really not familiar with anybody in it. But the sheer creativity, man. The sheer uh, fun that you have with these characters. You have all different kinds of characters in the films. You have guys who are goofballs, guys who don't believe it. They're, they're guys who are like, let's make money off this. We can go rob it. We can go into the future and, and go and get money out of a bank or something like that. And you have other characters who are like, what the hell is going on here, man? This is nonsense. This isn't real. And it's a lean, mean, crisp 70 minutes. The writing is strong enough that, uh, you know, you get to the third act and when you have the actual uh, uh, center conflict, which, I mean, the only real detriment I would even say of the film, and it's not even a detriment more so because the, the film is so strong, it's just, there's a, there's a uh, when it gets into a plot with some other characters and money gets stolen, it's a little, it's not as strong as the rest of the film, but what the, you know, what, what I'm watching the film and I see that clearly you can only do this for so long up to a certain point, whereas, you know, you have something like One Cut of the Dead, which has, it's in different acts, so you can have different you can you can have you know the first act run for X amount of time, the second act run for X amount of time. Whereas this film is primarily the one main idea. If that makes sense, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to spoil One Cut of the Dead if you haven't seen it yet. I don't want to spoil this film if you haven't seen it. But it's, it, you have a little less free reign in this than you did in that film. But this still is so strongly put together and so enjoyable. And just like I said with One Cut of the Dead, it's a true testament to the filmmaking prowess going on here, man. It's so confidently done and so enjoyable. And it's the kind of film that you want to show people you go man you like science fiction you've got to check out this film i mean time travel in and of itself in films is a paradox as is you can wrap your you know you can spend your whole day going about it what about this about that it's like man you just got to sit down and enjoy the ride and that's what we do here man uh yeah i love the film this is uh i watched it on amazon prime like i said this is a third window blu-ray i wonder uh you know i'd have to Keep that in mind if there were any bonus features on the release. I haven't even looked that up, but uh, with the Air or UK sale happening, I thought I saw it part of the sale, or maybe I just saw it associated. I'm not totally sure, but you're going to want to keep this on your radar, man. This is one of the most enjoyable and fun science fiction films of the past couple years, man. And and I also, I'm, I'm not the biggest time travel guy as is. You know, I have no strong opinions on it, but they make it so enjoyable here, make it so fun to watch that you're going to want to watch this and recommend this one. It's very inspirational. It's very low-key, man. It's pretty much just one location for I would say about 95% of the film until they do something else but it's a, it's a phenomenal film can't recommend it highly enough and it's one of the most enjoyable things I've watched this year so far but we're getting into the end of the episode man so the day is still beautiful it's uh oh my gosh man it's just you, you look at this and it almost makes you emotional when you look outside just you look at God's green earth and you're just like man I'm just so happy to be alive right now to be able to take this in and enjoy it all the sights the sounds the sensations man it's something truly euphoric that can't be put into words. You've got to experience it for yourself. So make sure you do that. Make sure you do what you want to do. It's the weekend. If you're not working, don't waste your time. I know I'm going to get the job done, get the work done. That's got to get done. So that when I wake up tomorrow morning, I can go, man, I was fulfilled. It's just truly uh, it's what life's all about, man. Taking it one day at a time. But all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. You enjoy the rest of your day whenever you're listening to this. And uh, I'll be back next week. So, all right, man, thanks so much for listening yet again. Or for the first time, whatever it is.